Welcome back to another entry here in the Nerdcore interview series. As always, it is uh, a wonderful time here spent with the people who come on to talk with us. And today we are getting the chance to talk to Ross White and Tom Berkeley, the directors of the short film Roy. And it has been uh, shortlisted for a BAFTA. And of course, it is Raul Alejandro Mendoza here to talk with you all and to go ahead and uh, conduct this interview. Ross? Tom, it's nice to have you guys here. Thank Thanks you for having us. us. Yeah. Um, a little bit, of, can you guys talk about a little bit about yourselves in the film uh, before we get into it? For sure, yeah. Um, go on ahead, Tom. You, you tell us about the film. <laughs> I'll tell you about the film, sure thing. So the film um, follows this reclusive widower who is sort of taken to cold calling strangers in the phone book, um, sort of yellow pages, looking for kind of brief moments of companionship and very rarely finding them. And then the film really begins when he accidentally calls this um, adult hotline and develops a sort of unlikely friendship um, with the young woman at the end of the phone who's played by Rachel Shenton. And then the film sort of follows their relationship, their friendship as it sort of blossoms over the course of these uh, phone conversations, which is all told from sort of his side of the, of the phone call. So that's the sort of brief synopsis of the actual film itself. Yeah. And then I'll, t I'll tell you a bit about us. Uh, Tom and myself have been collaborating now for about eight years, which is a bit crazy. Um, we started in theatre originally. Uh, we trained together at uh, drama school as actors with that sort of background. Um, we had a theatre company together while we were in um, and we sort of took uh, plays on tour around the United Kingdom. Um, and then I would say in 2019, we, we started to, to write together for, for Screen. Um, and yeah, Roy, Roy is our debut short film. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's interesting that you guys bring up that you guys started in theater because the film has a very like theater feel to it, um, especially because mm. it's like mostly in one location, correct? Yeah. Yeah, 100%. Yeah. That, was, that was kind of... I guess because it was our first film, we, we set ourselves a few sort of parameters wherein that we only wanted to have a, a sort of limited number of characters. So we gave ourselves two characters and then like sort of one location. That sort of was a bit of an exercise, really. And that, and that kind of came about right at the start when we were sort of thinking through different things that we could do. And so naturally, because of that, it became quite a dialogue heavy film. Um, which you're right was was felt felt more natural for us because originally when we were writing we were writing plays which obviously is is, is dialogue heavy as well so I think that'll probably there'll probably be a part of that that always stays in our in our filmmaking uh, we like we like writing dialogue and and the challenge for us is to is is for us to move away from that into more cinematic territory but we start we've started where we where we feel comfortable and uh how does it feel, you know, because you guys are you guys are both directing. How does it feel to, uh, you know, make that jump to, to, you know, the world of cinema now? And you're kind of uh, venturing into this new kind of territory for yourselves. How did it feel to, like, you know, have both of you work at the same time? You know, was there instances where there was something that you wanted that, you know, that Ross didn't want? Or was there, like, you know, a lot of ground to, like, level there with the directing choices? I, th I think because we write together and then direct together, there's sort of a good um, a basis from which we, we know what we've been trying to do the whole way through. And we're quite heavy on, on the prep side of things. So we kind of have tried to cross every bridge and, and speak about every eventuality kind of beforehand in some way. But of course, there's always stuff that crops up on the day that changes. And I think as long as we both have like a, a sound understanding of like the, the essence of what we're trying to get across in something, we can... Um, yeah, we can adapt to it and um, we're, we're i'd say we're pretty pretty good at agreeing on, on those things yeah yeah well the film is fantastic guys uh, oh. I, I, what's it called before i you know, get more into it i just want to tell you all, the film is fantastic um it's, thank you it's, uh the legendary david bradley's in this film i mean that's 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 crazy how y'all were able to get him in there like how did that happen how did you guys end up getting the chance to work with david bradley yeah it's 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 crazy to think about that at this stage i'm we we sort of it was an exercise really when we were writing that we try and pick um an actress that, that we feel like would be like almost like a dream casting for the role so that it helps us feel like we're writing the same character as opposed to us like splitting off and and uh, and going down two different roads so we said from the get-go that the 
it, it should be a sort of David Bradley type of actor, or we should try and find somebody that has the qualities of like David Bradley, who people will know from Harry Potter and Game of Thrones and Afterlife Broadchurch. And these are the things we knew him from. And he has this really great quality of being able to be, he plays a lot of villains, a lot of curmudgeonly characters, and he's got this kind of stubbornness to him, but he's also got um, this really fantastic capacity for, great um empathy and, and and sort of an honesty about about him so that was the kind of juxtaposition that we wanted to capture but that was literally just as an exercise for writing and then when we came to actually try and produce the film and get it made we thought we'll just try we'll just send him the script and a, and a letter and sort of outline what we wanted to do with it and um then there was like a I don't know a month or so of, of nothing and we were sort of thinking about well we should move on to something else. and then we got a, a, an email back saying that he'd he'd read it and really really enjoyed it and was felt very um attached to it kind of and drawn to it and and was like more than happy to come on board so that I was, it was a crazy crazy thing to happen but he's he's so good and we're just yeah we're thrilled that we were able to work with him that's awesome man and uh when, when did that, when did all this planning start, you know, the, like detail it for me, uh, pre-production wise, how long have you guys been working on this movie? Yeah, we, we wrote the film at the very start of 2020 before, before COVID was really a thing. <laughs> and then we went into prep on it in like spring, like pretty much as COVID started, we started prepping the film. Um, I think it had just been going for a little bit. And then we shot the film in the, of 2020 so we've been prepping probably for about four four months and then I'd say like two, two months quite probably like heavily um so yeah and then we shot it in September and then it was finished sort of over the Christmas period of that same year so it kind of was I guess like six seven months of making it and then it's just been doing the festival circuit for the last almost a year now which is a bit crazy um so yeah, it was it was a really interesting process for us as their kind of first film to kind of see something the whole way through from you know an idea right through to watching it in a in a cinema with with an audience. There was a, a really nice um, a nice experience, you know, to get to do that. Mm -hmm. Must feel surreal, man. It's it's a beautiful yeah. feeling, I bet. It um, really is. It really is. Yeah. yeah. Uh, the film feels very tight. I mean, what's it called? You know, from a, from a cinematography aspect, film feels very, very tight, you know, very claustrophobic at times. Was that a decision from the DP? Or is that something you all wanted to approach? How did you guys approach that kind of like atmosphere of this movie? Yeah, no, definitely. And, and that was the main thing. Uh, well, we knew that because it was going to be so... Um, Kind of intrusive on this one character and there was going to be no real space to, to cut away i mean he's he's a reclusive character you know it's it, need, it needed to have that that feeling of 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 this person being sort of trapped in in their own in their own ways so we we i guess one of the main things we decided to do was to shoot the film in this aspect ratio um which is which they call academy ratio which is i guess sort of it, it has a vintage feel to it because it's it's the kind of ratio of old old, old sort of televisions and because you it's it's much narrower and so it has that sort of that kind of optic illusion that feeling of, of trapping a character um in in frame it's it's quite a strong framing for for singles and working on 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 singles when we that's all we were going to have because we only had one character to work with so we felt like it would work both ways it would look it would look sort of powerful and it would be it would be good for the for the shots on him but it would also have that sort of subconscious effect of like you said um feeling claustrophobic on, on the character. And so it was a mixture of that and then trying to get the production design as well to just um, feel like he was, he was sort of dwarfed in the memory of, 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 his, of his wife who'd, who'd passed on. And um, I feel like our production de uh, design team did really well with that. I definitely did, because the film is beautiful to look at. And there's a lot of like, good um, you know, props there that make the film feel very, the, the home feel very homey. Like it, what's it called? It's like, you know, what was in the past of him. Um, yeah. But um, yeah, I, I really wanted to, because I found it fascinating. You know, you're, you're talking about an older man here, you know, yeah, but you also kind of bring in, you know, the sex worker into it and have that be the, you know, the, the companion at first. Why, why, why specifically that type of like friendship? Why was there something that was like really interesting to kind of like, you know, deep dive, dive deeply into that sort of a uh, friendship? 
it yeah i think it, it just felt like two people from the most sort of uh, polar opposites of life you know and really in really different places in their life but we sort of but that's a nice place to start and then you try and find the similarities that they're also like going through and i think both of them were kind of dealing with loneliness in a way you know and they were sort of both feeling quite isolated so we spoke a lot about how they could you know give each other the things in their life that they were maybe missing over the phone and obviously you know it's a, it's a 15 minute film so you're trying to get a lot across quite quickly but yeah it just felt like a really interesting sort of um place place to start that relationship you know to have these two characters who couldn't couldn't be more opposite really you know uh, Cara the, the role of Cara as you say is sort of like this adult hotline worker and played fantastically by Rachel Shenton um and she just brought so much sort of warmth to that character who who, who starts off you know working from her kind of script at this call center thing she works at but but quickly loses that in place of um a very human kind of she she gets Roy very quickly and they they veer away from all that kind of you know adult hotline stuff and, and just get to know each other as people she kind of drops her character as it were yeah yeah um and Rachel Shenton I mean it's 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 very impressive that y'all got to work with her too I mean that's an Oscar winner right there especially um how did you get the chance to work with her too? Is it the same way uh, with David Bradley where, you know, you, you kind of had it planned that you wanted a very like uh, Rachel Shenton type of character in there? Yeah, very much so. I mean, it was, a, we had a kind of, again, a particular voice and vocal quality. And I think the ability to kind of portray such a well-rounded character as a voiceover part is a, is a real challenge for, 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 for an actor. So it needed to be somebody that, that had this sort of the experience, the, the ability to kind of to make that um, come across. And Rachel then was also quite, she was quite an inspiration, as you say, with the Oscar win, because we were going into the short film world and she, she had won the sort of ultimate prize, as it were, for, for The Silent Child, I think back in 2017. So we already knew about Rachel and her work and stuff like that. And um, we, we sort of, the film is a, is a kind of co-production between the sort of the company that might have brought me and Ross sort of started when we began sort of working together and then Slick Films is the sort of main company and Rachel was heavily involved with the work there so it felt like a really nice kind of like natural thing that kind of came about when we were thinking about casting it that she she would be a really good fit and then uh, sort of ticked all of those boxes and so she really understood the, the short film sort of gig really and and, and how it, it kind of requires people to kind of you know just just muck in and she was happy to come down and set and read in you know even though she wasn't being filmed it was going to be you know essentially a voiceover role she came down and she was there in the room with David and they played the scenes you know live together which I think really really benefited the performance yeah yeah and I took a peep at the uh child's IMDb page you know um you still you're working on something else now you got another one coming up um and I see that it's kind of you know not similar but you know we're still kind of concentrating on the uh you know, the relationships between two humans, right? And um, I wanted to ask, is that something that you all want to cover more in your films? Is that like an overlying theme that you find a lot of interest in? Yeah, do you know, I, I think, again, that maybe is a bit of the theatre in us, but I think we just love the kind of the human drama that we can find in these stories, you know? And um, yeah, so the, yeah, the second the second film we've, we've made there, it's sort of in the canon, it's been filmed and it's just started at the festival circuit. It's called The Irish Goodbye. Um, and we filmed that here where I am currently in Northern Ireland. Um, and yeah, it's just starting its kind of life. But yeah, I, I suppose there are a few similarities. I think I think the main similarity is, you know, it sort of follows these two brothers who um, have been estranged and have to reconnect following the kind of the death of their mum. She sort of died a bit, a bit young and it sort of had to come back and sort out the affairs and things. And I guess with, with Roy in that film, they, they both sort of toe this line of, characters dealing with grief and quite dramatic things in, in a in a kind of comic film universe. You know, it's kind of black comedy of uh, treading that line between, yeah, between the sort of um, the tragedy and the comedy, I think. And that's something that we, when we, when we can sort of spin that on a dime and we can go from laughing to crying or, or vice versa pretty quickly, I feel like that's that's a cinematic place that we quite like being or, or a dramatic place anyway, storytelling-wise. So... Yeah, I think 
they do have that similarity and, and I suppose we probably will hang about on that kind of uh, no man's land of yeah sort of tragic comedy for a bit longer mm-hmm. I got one final question for y'all uh, because what's it called I, I noticed this is a directorial debut man this is and this is a really really impressive debut I mean and I, I'm being as completely honest as I can be this this movie is fantastic and I thank um, you thank yeah you. I wanted to know, is there, is there kind of a pressure there when, you know, you're making your debut and you've got, you know, these two, you know, high, what's it called, appraised actors and, you know, you've got, uh, is there a lot of pressure there to want to, you know, to deliver more than you want to deliver? Yeah, that's really interesting, actually. I think, I think it's, um, we almost feel like the prep, we've kind of feel the pressure retrospectively because the, the whirlwind of making it was so um, so quick and there was so much that we were learning for the first time that there was there was almost really no chance to stop and think about this opportunity that we've managed to kind of generate for ourselves so it was only, it was almost like there were probably a couple moments when we first started to film and we had you know David Bradley in front of us doing his work that we were like oh as, as if we we're actually here because only a year ago you know we were you know, we, we both had to leave London because we couldn't really afford to leave, live there anymore. So we had to move back to our hometowns and stuff. And, it, you know, it, it, it kind of it was all a bit wayward at that time. And then, you know, within a very short amount of time, we found ourselves, with, as you say, with like this opportunity. So I think um, when, when we kind of got through the edit and we had the film and stuff like that and it was going to go out and do its thing, we just hoped that it sort of resonated in the way that we wanted it to, because we felt like it had all the ingredients to kind of be, a, be a, a good story and you know we had this two wonderful performances and stuff like that and we felt like if it was going to be anything that let it down it was going to probably be us but we're just you know we're we're we're, we're chuffed that it has, ha- has had a good response and um and yeah it's it, it we couldn't really have asked for anything more of a, of a debut sort of project really yeah well here's hoping for that nomination uh for the bath fingers crossed yeah thank fingers you fingers crossed man uh you're, you're what's it called the nerdcore team here just what's it called we're, we're got our fingers crossed for y'all because this is fantastic thank and, you uh where can we keep up to date with the film's journey you know um is there any socials and what about y'all we want to keep up to date with y'all where can we find y'all and all that wonderful stuff yes so the film you'll be able to find the film on all the platforms at roy film or some variation of that if you search that you should find it um in terms of myself and tom i am um, at Ross J White, I think Tom, you're at Tom underscore Barkley. Is that correct? Yeah, yeah, that's me. And then and then, and then Slick oh, Films, um, production company, and Floodlight Pictures as well. They're the two kind of companies behind that. So for any further work, there'll be there'll be those as well. But yeah, that's 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 us. Yeah, keep up to date with them, y'all. This movie's fantastic, and hopefully, what's it called in the coming months, we hear about the nomination for the BAFTA, and. Uh, of course, this is, has been another entry here in the Nerdcore interview series. And from uh, Tom and, and Ross, we go ahead and uh, wish you the best of luck. The film is fantastic, and we hope, uh, yeah, hope, I uh, hope we can uh, we can get you back on. I want to watch uh, that ne- the other one you're talking, the other one you yeah, made, so we can go definitely. ahead and talk again. And uh, that'd be great. That'd be really great. Thank you for having us. Of course. Thank you. Man. Yeah. Thank you to uh, thank you to Catherine for reaching out so that way we could uh, get this settled. But. Uh, yeah, I'm really interested to see where your work goes. And uh, yeah, and we'll see you guys in the next one.